I'm Anne Simmons in the newsroom of the Los Angeles Times. Tensions have continued to mount in eastern Ukraine after a referendum on self-rule and calls by separatists for the region to be absorbed by Russia. Ukraine's central government and Western nations dismiss the vote as illegal. Meanwhile, the Kremlin has called for the Ukrainian government to begin a dialogue with the separatists. Joining me to discuss the situation in Ukraine is Los Angeles Times global affairs reporter Carol J. Williams. She's in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. Hello, Carol. Hi, Anne. So, Carol, first of all, bring us up to speed. Um, tell us about the referendum over the weekend. What was the outcome? Where do things stand with that? Well, predictably, there was overwhelming support expressed in the vote, but the people who took part in the referendum were already in favor of independence or you know, separate you know, entity from the, the country of Ukraine. The people who were opposed to a change in the unity of Ukraine just didn't vote at all because they were wary of going to the polls that were under the you know protection of these armed militants, many of them with masks, and it was a very intimidating atmosphere for anybody who was planning to vote no. Um, they, even the people who voted for the referendum were not entirely sure what they were voting for. The wording of it was very vague. It just said, do you support the independence of the People's Republic of Donetsk? It didn't give any indication as to what it would mean if that independence was supported, whether it would lead to eventual annexation with Russia or just a different status within the country of Ukraine. There's discussion about a federalization of the country so that the regions would have more power. So, so how realistic is it to think that Russia would annex eastern Ukraine? Well, President Putin has signaled that he's not going to do that, at least not immediately. The Kremlin put out a statement yesterday, the day after the referendum, saying that they respect the expression of the will of the people in these two areas that voted to declare independence, but it gave no indication that they were doing anything more than just taking you know, note of the fact that right. this vote had taken place. And today there were suggestions from the foreign minister of Russia that the Kiev authorities negotiate with the leaders of these rebellious regions in the east. And it's something that you know the Kiev interim authorities have said they're not going to do because they have seized power at the you know barrel of a gun, and that's right. not how they plan to conduct negotiations on the future of the country. Well, tell us this, Carol. You've just returned from Donetsk, is that right? What's the mood like right. on the ground in eastern Ukraine and also in Kiev where you are? Well, in eastern Ukraine, people are very af afraid because of the anti-terrorism actions that the government has been carrying out in an attempt to recover control of the buildings and the bases and the government facilities that were seized by the militants over the last month or two. They, they're in kind of a difficult position in that if they just allow these gunmen to stay in control of the facilities, and disrupt the work of the government in these regions, then they're just going to be encouraging more and more of this separatist militancy. Whereas when they attempt to recover control, there are casualties involved, and this is used by the state-controlled press in Russia to show you know, evidence of the bad intentions that the Kiev government has toward Russians in the East. Well, just to wrap up, Carol, where do things go from here? What's the prognosis? Well, it's hard to say because certainly there was an expectation among those who voted for the independence referendum that the Kremlin would come to their aid, either sending in troops to protect them from the Ukrainian government troops or that they would annex these territories as they did with Crimea back in March. But there's, there's not a broad consensus among the people in the East that they want to join Russia. As a matter of fact, you know, consistently polls have shown that the majority favor remaining part of Ukraine. They just want more autonomy and more ability to decide their own affairs and including, you know, trade and industrial integration with Russia. Great insight, Carol. Thank you so much. For more on this story and others, please visit latimes.com and follow us on Twitter 
at LA Times.